Now, what is the foot? Why do we trim? Here's a bowl I trimmed before. The foot is what gives the pot a little lift. You'll see the difference between these two. One, having a foot, it's more shaped. It has that lift. Whereas this one that has not been trimmed doesn't have that finished bowl form. It's really heavy at the bottom. So part of trimming is to shape up the bottom of the bowl as well as to remove any extra thickness. Because anytime you work with clay, your goal is to create an evenly thick piece. And right now the lip is really thin, the bottom is really thick, so that could cause cracking or even exploding later on. Guys, let's get into it. How to trim a bowl for beginners. First thing is you wanna make sure that you have a nice leather hard pot. When you're throwing the clay, you're working with plastic moldable clay, but this is not when you wanna trim it. After you throw it, the top will dry first because it's tall, the gravity will pull the water down, it's thinner, so the lip will dry first. As it's drying, and once the lip is dry enough, you'll wire cut underneath your bowl, and you'll flip it upside down so that the foot can get leather hard. You'll know it's leather hard when it's lost its shine and you can't move the clay. In fact, this is a little on the wet side. And it's kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You want it just right. Too wet will be challenging to trim, and too dry will be challenging to trim. So I should wait a little bit longer, but I'm excited, so let's get into it. When you're trimming and you have your leather hard bowl, the next step before you do anything else is to mark your bottom. Where does the bottom transition from the bottom to the wall? So it's flat, 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 and where the flat bottom becomes the wall, hold your finger there and kind of mirror it on the bottom with an X, a fingernail mark. That X will mark the spot of where your foot should go. So now that we have marked our bottom, that bottom you can see here, the bottom on this piece is all about here. So when you mark your bottom, that will represent the outside of the foot. And I like to refer to the foot as a donut that sits on the top of the pot. We'll trim the outside of the donut and then we'll remove the inside, leaving a donut raised on top. That's the foot. So now that we've marked our bottom, our next task is to center this pot. And I like to start just using the wheel head and finding those concentric circles and just placing it upside down right on there. Be mindful if you have bat screws that you don't knock those. If your pot's too big, you can put a bat on to cover that or just pull them out if yours are just like mine. So I'm gonna eyeball it. Does it look centered? And then I can spin it and see does it spin centered? Sometimes all you have to do is eyeball it and that's pretty good. But let's say you're struggling, you don't know how to center it, you don't know where it shifts as it spins, it's kind of like ba bump, ba bump. I should also do this morning. Really see as it spins, it's like ba bump, but oh no, it's not centered. So you don't want to start trimming until you center that clay. So if eyeballing it does not work, another tip is to take your needle tool, elbows against your body, drop the needle tool over at three o'clock, close to the edge of the foot, and make a circle. This is not on your X, this is just close to the edge. And you can see where one side is thick and one side is thin. That tells me I need to shift the pot to the skinny side to help center that pot, right? The next way to test if your, if your pot is centered is to hold a stiff finger at three o'clock. So my elbow is against my body. My finger is gonna come towards the clay. Now it's all center, so I could just follow this clay. And yeah, it's touching the whole way around. But if I anchor up and slowly come towards and let the clay just make a mark knot, make a mark knot. So where it's not touching, I know the pot needs to come that way. So sometimes I'll just use my finger, but what if I'm like, shoot, I can't remember. So the third way to check if your pot is centered is take your needle tool, instead of your finger approaching to see where it touches and not touches and not, you can take the needle tool, connect your hands, and just slowly approach the clay and just let it make a mark. Boom, 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 boom. Stop it and make a mark. Where did that line start touching the clay? And it kept touching and it kept touching and it kept touching to right there. So I can see it was sticking out over here. So I'm gonna center where it was sticking out to center where I'm gonna to push towards. So I push towards the side that it was not touching. It, you see that also aligns with where it's thick and thin. So I can support myself and slowly push that clay towards the side that it never touched. And then I like to kind of check with all three. Does it kind of... Now notice because nothing's holding it down, my left hand is always gonna keep this pot from flying off as I'm applying pressure and it, since it's not yet centered. So I'm just marking, where did it make a mark? It was sticking out all here, so I'm gonna bring it this way. 
support it and bring it this way. So now that we've centered, it is time to secure our pot to the wheel. Now first, if you have dust on your wheel, nothing's going to stick. So you want to wring out a sponge, make sure it's clean, no slip, hold your pot in place, wipe off the dust. This will allow the lug to secure your pot to the wheel. A lot of people miss that step and then their lugs go flying. So make sure there's no dust. And if your pot is dry on the lip, you can even add a little moisture to the lip of your pot. All right, a lug of clay is just a squeeze of clay. It will ultimately be recycled, like a little coil. And I'm gonna roll it about this thick, and usually three is the magic number. The thickness of these coils will depend on how tall my piece is. If this was a smaller bowl, I'd wanna roll a lower coil so I can trim more. When I secure it, I'm gonna hold the pot in place and press it into both the wheel and the lip of the pot. Hold it in place. And you're thinking of like a triangle. So you want to hold it in place. Three is the magic number if you can secure it like a triangle. One there, one there, so boom. All right, we are secure, we are centered. Next up, you're gonna get your trimming tool of choice. This is one of my favorites. It has the benefit of both sharp corners and a rounded edge. So I'm gonna start with that sharp corner, elbows against my body. I'm gonna hover over my fingernail mark with my elbows against my body, get it spinning first, and then just drop like a record player on the fingernail mark. This circle is the outside of the foot. So try not to get confused. When I was learning how to trim a foot, I would remove the foot. That was my foot when I was learning. But this X, this circle, is gonna represent the outside of the foot. So we're gonna hold it in place. Now I always start by removing the outside because you have to hold the pot in place with the left hand while the right hand controls the trim tool. If you're a left-hander, everything is reversed. I'm a right-hander, my wheel is spinning counterclockwise. My right hand is the boss hand now, meaning it's anchored against my body. My left hand is gonna hold the pot and they connect whenever possible. So I remove all the thickness on the outside first. Speed is your friend, hands are connected. My index finger, I'm on top of the tool and my index finger is pressing that metal down. I am pressing. And then I start with that sharp corner and as I get that corner, then I can round my trim tool, but I have to let it rotate and then I can move. Let it rotate and then I can drop my trim tool. If I just go woo, it's gonna get the pot off center and yucky. So be patient, let it rotate here and then move. Let it rotate here. When I say let it rotate, I mean the clay is spinning around. Now don't get confused, that looks like it could be a foot. Remember our circle marked the outside of our foot. So we're working our way to moving the clay up to that circle. We're slowly working our way up. Now part of establishing that foot is switching your trim tool from kind of that angling and getting that curve and to allow that foot to really come up. If you take your trim tool and hold it parallel to the wheel, anchor yourself, hold the pot in place and push down. Let the corner march, match up to the circle that we dropped on the fingernail mark and just press down. As you press down, that foot comes up. And as that foot comes up, you're also making a flat edge here, which we don't want. Because anytime you trim, you're just trying to trim away the exterior clay to match the form that you threw on the interior of the clay. And when we threw a bowl, we talked about how we wanted a continuous curve. So when we trim this, we wanna see a continuous curve. So I already know if it's going wide and then diagonal, it's thick there. And every once in a while, stop and tap. The change of tone will tell you how thin or thick your pot is. So I know I can hold this and I can get rid of this here. Because again, I'm trying to match the interior form. I'm gonna press down on the outside of that foot. I have that flat edge, but now I can go down and round. Round, hands are connected, elbows against my body. And I still have, I'm getting a little curve, but I gotta still just really focus here. I know I can get this exterior curve to look as continuous as that interior. Now, when we throw a bowl, we are looking for that continuous curve and we're looking for the top bit of the lip to be thin enough. Because when you flip it upside down and you attach it with these lugs, I can't get the trim tool all the way down there. So as I'm pressing down here to remove that clay and I'm pressing here to remove that thickness and I'm pressing here to get the form to match the interior, 
But as I drop down here where I know it's thinner, I'm really relaxing the pressure and how much clay I'm taking off so that I don't end with press, 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 and then a really sharp transition where the gloves are and I can't get there. So again, throwing a bowl that you know the lip is thin enough, the bottom you can just trim off later. Hands are connected. I'm rotating this trim tool down. Let the clay rotate around, move it down. Let it rotate here, let it rotate here, let it rotate here. The more patient I am in letting this clay rotate, the smoother my trimming will be, the cleaner the trimming will be. Speed is your friend. Quick pace, light pressure. Quick pace, light pressure. And then rotate, rotate, rotate. Now let's stop it, tap. Sounds pretty good. A little more. Now this is when you might want to trim through it. So you do want to get in the habit of tap every once in a while to make sure you're not going to trim through. Stop. Sounds pretty good. So again, I always focus on the outside of the foot first. As soon as you start removing clay from here, and sometimes I'll see beginners just trim the whole foot off. And that's making this thinner, which means that as I'm securing it with my left hand and applying pressure with my right hand to trim, it's thin and I can just press right through it. So I try to keep the thickness here as long as possible so I have something to press onto while I'm trimming. I just kind of want to take a little more off. A thick pot equals a heavy pot. A thin pot equals a light pot, but a thin pot is a more fragile pot too. All right, when the outside is removed, it's time to establish the inside of that donut. So again, the foot is this donut sitting on the foot of your pot, the bottom. Every pot has a foot, it's just how you wanna establish it. It could be a flat foot, and it's not a technical term, but I do call it a donut sitting on top because that worked in my brain when I was learning. So first, we made our fingernail mark. Where did the bottom transition? We marked it. We trimmed the outside down and round. Now we're gonna mark the inside with a circle. We're gonna spin it and drop and make a circle. This circle is gonna represent the inside of the foot. And we're gonna remove all the clay from the solid interior. So again, elbows against my body, drop it on the inside of this foot, make a circle. And now this is the foot right here. This is the foot. So we're gonna take this corner tool, elbows against our body, and drop it in the center. Let the clay catch it. And slowly move over to three o'clock. Slowly let it rotate and then move. And stop right there on the interior of the foot of the clay. So I like this corner tool because it lets me dig at that clay and get a nice thin layer. But I love this tool even more because once I do that, I can turn it to the flat edge, start in the center, and slowly move over. Just watch the corner of the trim tool that you don't knock it out. And anchoring your elbows against your body will give you stability and security while you do that. A little more. Again, speed is our friend if you're confident. Speed is your friend. It helps give a cleaner cut. Remove a little bit, because you can always remove more, but you can't put it back. A little bit, and then I'm gonna smooth this out all the way to the interior of that foot. And now, I haven't touched the foot at all. So at this point, I can gently kind of shave it up if I want, a little pressure from the inside to shape that, a little pressure from the outside to clean this up. Again, kind of hold it in place if you're applying pressure at three o'clock. Don't want it to go flying, even though you have those lugs. And then I can just barely skim this just to clean that up, just at the end. And then I can turn that a little back and forth to smooth out our transition. Final step. So we have marked our bottom, we have centered the pot, we have secured our pot, we have trimmed the outside, we have trimmed the inside. The final step, sponge off your foot with a wrung out, get all the clay out of the sponge, wring it out, you don't want a super wet sponge, and just let it spin. And just let it rotate. And just let it rotate. And then boom, you thin up all those lines. Texture right there, just let it rotate, be patient. I am turning my sponge as it fills with clay to a clean side. And it's nice to have a bucket of water here, one, to clean the wheel head from any dust, but also wring it out every once in a while. Wring your sponge out in your bucket of water so that it can do its job and really clean that pot while it just spins here. Smooth out any ridges, you don't like any texture. And this is a step that a lot of beginners will skip 
but it saves you so much time in the long run. Because from here, you wanna let it dry, you'll sign it like you're famous, you'll clean up your signature, and how you put this bowl into the kiln is how it's gonna come out permanently. So at this point, with dry hands, I'm gonna peel away the lugs of clay, peel away one, peel away another, and then I can just, with dry hands, pull my bowl away from the third one. And then I can look, if there's any texture left over from the lug of clay, and if I were just to put that in the kiln now, it would come out with that rough texture. And I don't want that, and I bet you don't want that rough texture. So here's in a final tip, use that same sponge, wring it out, and just, just a wrung out sponge will smooth that right off. So take the time, check the surface of your bowl, this is a beginner step that a lot of people skip. Just check the surface. If you need to let it dry from here, let it dry. You can let it dry all the way. You can leave it for a month and come back to it and still clean it up. But if you skip this step, if I put this in the kiln right now, that's all gonna come out permanent on there. Now, stay tuned for more videos to come, but I hope this helps on how to trim a bowl for beginners. I'm gonna look forward to seeing your bowls Use the hashtag TWM Bowl Challenge so I can see your bowls getting thrown and trimmed, and I can't wait to see what you'll create. Hope these videos help. See you for the next ones.